Hi there and welcome to our first lesson in our B6 topic and we're going to be looking at understanding microbes today. Uh, we're going to be focusing on bacteria, fungi and uh, viruses. Anyway, I'll let you read our objectives. Okay, so our objectives for lesson one on understanding microbes. By the end of this lesson you should know and understand the structure and function of mi the microbes, bacteria, fungi, focusing on yeast and of viruses. Now bacteria are very very small um, cells up to about 10 micrometers long. Now in comparison with other cells that we've looked at such as animal cells and plant cells they are slightly different. Now this is a rough diagram of a bacterial cell now what we're going to do is we're going to actually look at what the individual bits of the cell are. Now the one major difference here is these things, the flagellum, and these are tail-like um, structures that allow the bacteria cell to be able to move. Now further up on the bacterial cell we've got a cell wall and that's similar to a plant cell it helps to maintain shape and stop the bacteria cell from absorbing too much water and bursting. Now the green lines here are the bacterial DNA now they don't have a nucleus as such but what they do have is the DNA and that controls the cell replication and so on. Now like all cells they then have the cytoplasm and the cell membrane again the cytoplasm is where the chemical reactions happen and then the cell membrane allows things to move in and out of the cell. Now in terms of bacterial cell shape there are four different varieties of shape. The first is a spherical shape. The second one is a rod shape. Then there is a spiral shape and finally there is a curved shape and you'll have to excuse my drawings on those. Now in terms of food, bacteria get their food from a variety of different nutrients. Now their main source of um, food is through carbohydrates and proteins. However, like plants, they can use energy from the sun to get their own source of sugar. Now bacteria are a very unique organism as they're able to survive in a variety of different habitats. For example, they can live inside hot springs, peat bogs and even inside humans. Now bacteria cells are very unique in the fact that they can reproduce in, with binary fission. Now what that means is each cell can reproduce to form a genetically identical cell. So essentially this cell will reproduce to form two cells who in turn will reproduce to form four cells who in turn will reproduce to form eight cells who will then in turn reproduce to form 16 cells. And that continues and continues and continues. Now this means that they can be grown commercially on a large scale in tanks called fermenters. Now because of this, because of this rapid growth, um, diseases which are caused by bacteria can spread very, very quickly as inside the human body is ideal for bacterial growth. Now some food that can contain um, toxic waste can be produced by bacteria. So the bacteria produce that food that, or the toxic materials that are then dangerous to the human body. Now the study of bacteria can be very, very useful, um, as well as having bacteria that can cause um, nasty effects on, the, on humans, there is also a lot of useful bacteria. So when you're studying them, it's important to follow certain safety procedures. Now, the way we do that is on an agar plate. And we can see on this one that we've got a picture of 
the agar plate here and then we've got the bacterial growth in the middle there. So in terms of precautions you need to ensure that you've got a clean work area, a clean surface that you're actually going to work on. You need to wash your hands and sterilise all equipment that you are going to be using. Now this might mean that you use a disinfectant afterwards or something called an autoclave. And then finally keep the lids on the bacteria when they're growing. Now yeast cells are a example of a fungus or a fungi for the plural. Now they reproduce asexually uh, similar to bacteria by something called budding. Now what we'll do is we'll look at a structure of a uh, yeast cell. Now with the yeast cell it is um, a slightly different structure to what we might be used to. Now you can see here we've got two nuclei. Now this is the main nuclei and then this section here is the nuclei in the bud cell and this is where we get the asexual reproduction. So this is released from the uh, main part of the cell to become a new fungi cell. And again around the outside we have a cell wall. On the inside of the cell wall we have the cell membrane. The large space on the inside of the cell is a vacuole and then again we have in here the cytoplasm where the chemical reactions take place. Now as was with the bacterial cells you need to follow the same safeguarding issues to protect yourself from any harmful uh, or pathogenic uh, fungi cells. So the same things as wash your hands, clean surfaces, sterilise all the equipment and keep lids on any cultures that you are developing. Now in terms of the reproduction and growth of yeast, yeast need various uh, conditions to grow well in. Now these conditions include lots of sugar, uh, optimum temperature and pH and removal of waste products such as alcohol. Now, their growth follows a pattern. Now, the pattern is that as the temperature increases, the total number of yeast cells will increase. Now, if we increase the temperature, the rate in which they grow increases. So, if we increase it even further, we will get an increase in their rate of growth. However, you will notice that we get this plateau. And the plateau is caused by a lack of the resources that we saw earlier, so you might be running out of sugar. Now you can see if we look at the temperatures here, we've got uh, 35 degrees in the red. In the green, we've got 25 degrees. And then in the blue, we've got 15 degrees. Now, if we go above the 35 degrees, we get no further um, number of yeast cells being produced because above 40 degrees, that's when the enzymes start to denature and we get no more yeast cells being produced. However, with the 10 degree increase, we get a doubling of the rate of reproduction. Now, the virus is the smallest of all the microbes, and it's only a size of 1,000 nanometers. Now, if we have a look at a picture of one, we can have a look at the structure of it. Now, in the middle, in here, is the genetic information, and the genetic information is surrounded around the outside by a protein coat. Now, viral reproduction happens in other living cells, so they need to be able to live in other cells. So what actually happens is the virus will attach itself to a specific host. Now, what then happens is the genetic material is injected into that host cell, and then the DNA, or the viral DNA, 
hijacks the cell's DNA to make the components of the new virus and then the new virus uh, is released when the host cell splits open and releases that virus. Okay, so that's the end of our lesson on uh, first lesson on microbes where we've been looking at um, bacterial cells, viral cells and uh, yeast or fungi cells and the different conditions and different structures that they actually have. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.